Greetings and welcome to A Sip of Inspiration. My name is Stephanie Wilson Coleman and I'm your host for tonight's show. Remember, as always, this is a call in show and the number is 312 738 1845. We've been dealing a lot with entrepreneurs and what it takes to not only create but nurture the entrepreneur spirit, and tonight is no different. I have joining me Liz Gardner from the Women's Business Developmental Center who will help us take an idea and actually nurture it until it becomes a viable business. I want you guys to stay, to stay seated, get your paper and your pencil ready, and jot down your questions and give us a call because Liz also does something wonderful and that she can help you take your idea and turn it into a business. Thank you, Liz, for agreeing to come on the show and talk to us. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Tell, a, tell the audience something about you. Well, I am with the Women's Business Development Center. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization based in beautiful downtown Chicago, right in front of Millennium Park. And what we do is we help entrepreneurs start, grow uh, their businesses. Uh, and what we like to do is to see business owners thrive. And that means to create a business in order to not only employ themselves, but employ people within uh, the community. So we have a plethora of services mm -hmm. that we have available to help entrepreneurs. Uh, anything that you might want, uh, we have that at our center, which is located downtown. What are your hours? Our hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we, our address is 8 South Michigan. Our website is www.wbdc.org. And our number is 312-853-3477, extension 59. So we are here really to help everyone, not only women, but we also help men as well. So guys, come on out. We're here to help you. <laughs> okay. And is it by appointments? We do uh, ask you to make an appointment to see one of our business coaches, but we do have a number of classes. We have something going on every night of the week. We have uh, conferences and networking events. So if clients do want to come and see us, please go to our website, take a look at the calendar of events. And we have something for everyone in whatever stage of business you might be in. Now, for someone who's thinking about starting a business, what are some of the things that they should consider? And, then, and how is starting a, a business different for women than it is for men? Well, that's an interesting question. The first thing I would say is really think through what you want to do. And I would say that also to have a passion about what you're doing because it takes a lot of hard work, uh, time, and energy to make a business successful. So the first thing you want to think about is your skills or your skill set mm -hmm. and what you have to offer and what the needs are in the community. Do you want to have a service or do you want to make a product? So we help you kind of figure out what you want to do. Okay. And I would also say the best thing too is go through a class. We have a number of classes. One is called Jumpstart Your Business, and that's a five-week class that takes you from idea to actually writing the business plan, which is important. The business plan is a roadmap to success. So someone should take their idea, put it on paper, and once something's on paper, it turns into a reality sometimes. Now, um, let's say my idea is to create a handbag. <laughs> I need the perfect handbag. Not that I'm going to create it, but somebody listening might want to create the perfect handbag. So I would call you, make an appointment, get in that class, and what are some of the steps that you would help guide me through? Um, well, the first step is to decide, you know, you have a handbag, who is your customer, and who would buy that handbag? Because you have to distinguish between a hobby and a business concept or a feasible business idea. So who would that be? Who would buy that handbag? What would it consist of? 
Um, so you would need to make a prototype of that handbag. And I would suggest having a focus group to okay. get some ideas on does it work? Would a woman carry it? What age group would carry that handbag, so to speak? And then find out how many of those handbags can you sell at a profit. So we help you really decide, you know, which type of product mm -hmm. is best for your target market, how to price that product, and then we figure out what your revenue assumptions would be, and then how much money can you actually make? Because if you're not making any money, then it's a pro then it's a hobby. That's right. That's now, what about concerns that women have to deal with that aren't necessarily a problem for men? The center was founded on helping women business owners kind of push through that glass ceiling. Okay. Oftentimes in corporate environments and sometimes in certain industry sectors, women can only reach a certain plateau, so to speak. So what we do is we help um, women get the financing that they need. Sometimes the men do have uh, role models or people that can help them through that finance mm -hmm. phase. But I can tell you now in this economy everybody's having a problem getting financing. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we help the women get the financing that they okay. need and then we also have an area where we certify you as a women business enterprise. And once you're certified as a women bis business enterprise, then you can go out and compete for some of those contracts uh, that are set aside for women entrepreneurs. So we can help you with that. And I urge everyone to come out to our, our center. Mm -hmm. Again, it's right downtown. It's so easily accessible. Uh, so we want to help you grow your business and start your business. Why do people decide to start businesses? What have you found uh, to be some of the common characteristics of entrepreneurs? It's hard work being an entrepreneur. And oftentimes people say, I want to be my own boss. I want to create my own wealth. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, have money set aside for my family. And I can't seem to do that in the actual uh, work environment. Oftentimes we're thrown into entrepreneurship by uh, circumstance. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are right sized, down sized, or whatever you might want to call it and that's pushing us into entrepreneurship. So, you know, when you decide that that's something that you want to do as an entrepreneur, get your idea, get moving, because it's time for you to recreate wealth for yourself. Now, I have some internet questions that I need to ask you. One of them is, how long has the uh, center been in business? The center has been in business for well over 25 years. We work uh, with a number of corporate and government agencies throughout the city of Chicago. We work closely with Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity mm. to help create uh, business opportunities for women and or men, whoever might come into our, our center. So there's a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs depending on what the product and or service uh, is. Uh, I would say that if you don't have a, a business idea, if you don't have a plan, I would say take a step back. Okay. and decide, you know, what is your passion, what do you want to do, and then not only our agency, because we are a small business development center, so we also work closely with the SBA. If we can't help you, we do have the resources available to get you the help that you need. Now, if, there, if a business becomes certified by your agency, how does that help you with other certifications? Well, it does, because mostly all of the certica certifications work with each other. Okay. We are part of a national organization, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. So once you get certified by our agency, you can then compete for, certi for contracts nationwide. We also work closely with oh. the Chicago Mo Minority Development Council, mm -hmm. and they certify uh, men uh, and, uh, of African American descent or other ethnic uh, groups mm -hmm. and so we can help you do those things uh, through our certification process. We work collaboratively with the City of Chicago, the State of Illinois, and all of the other certifying bodies throughout um, the Illinois area. So we are a one-stop shop. So you come in and we can help you with uh, all of the, the forms that you need to fill out. All of the forms are on our website and again our website is www dot wbdc dot org and you can get out there and get all the information and then do please call our office 
if you have additional questions. Now, what businesses do you see people starting more than others? What, what's the popular choice? In this environment, it's been a wide range. We've gotten a lot of people wanting to open up retail stores or online uh, retail. A lot of food in restaurants. Uh, people have packaged foods, cookies, pies, cakes, mm. things like that. And then a big push now is into the sustainability uh, environment, the green. The green, right. So uh, people have developed products and services to help feed that industry. So I would say the green industry is pretty hot right now. Uh, in addition to um, consulting services because people are using the skill set that they have okay. uh, gained in corporate uh, in corporate America and using that skill set to build their business. Tell us some of your success stories. We have, wow, we have a number of success stories. Actually, we just had our conference, our Entrepreneurial Women's Conference. I heard about it. That's how month. I found out about you yeah, guys. Yeah, it was, it was a great, great That's event. That's what they said. It was wonderful. And um, there was uh, one of our keynote, well, one of our guest speakers, she started a pretzel company. And the pretzel company uh, started in a small, small, tiny apartment on the north side of Chicago, and she made pretzels. She came to our center, got business coaching, um, worked and developed her business plan, and now today I can, I'm happy to say that this is a $15 million business. Uh, how, how much? $15 million, and okay. she's just making okay. pretzels. So we have a number of success stories uh, like that. We have women who have opened up uh, daycare centers and child care centers, and they started in their homes and serving two and three and four children, and now they're opening up their third and fourth center. We have women entrepreneurs who are in the trades. They may uh, uh, have uh, uh, anything from shoveling to demolition, mm -hmm. and they're doing really well. So if you do it right, if you get um, the right business plan, the right business coaching, you can be successful in your business. What's your most, most popular class that you offer? I would say our most popular class is our Jumpstart class. Okay. Um, the Jumpstart class is because it's five weeks of getting down and dirty, Are developing they day your or night classes? It's day and night, okay. actually. Oh. So we, we kind of work with you depending on what time frame you have available. So what we do is we take you through each step of the business plan, from what is my idea to marketing. Marketing is key in the business plan, then also financing. How are you going to get the money? How are you going to repay the banker? Uh, with the money. <laughs> so that's offered um, practically every month. Mm -hmm. um, afternoon and evening classes are available. So that's one of our most popular classes that we have at the center. And also people do take advantage of our, our business coaching. Our business coaching is at no charge since we are a nonprofit organization. So all you have to do is call our office and the number is 312-853-3477, extension zero. And they can call our office, schedule an appointment, and come in and speak to one of the business coaches, and they will give them some direction in which to go. Now, give me an example. Uh, tell me how a business coaching session would go, because that's really hot right now. Business coaching um, is hot, I guess, yeah. is, is in that word. But what the client will do is come in and really kind of tell us what direction they want to go. Sometimes it's a lot of hard work going through their financial documents and then sometimes it's just tears and crying because their business is not meeting those those um, those numbers mm -hmm. that they need to make that remains profitable so it is really a session where we can help you decipher which way in which to go into your business sometimes one idea turns into to another idea sometimes your business concept in this environment is not a good business concept to go into right now so it's very important to get the tools and the resources and the people behind you to really help propel your business forward. There are a lot of resources that we offer at the center, and we also, as I mentioned before, collaborate with a number of agencies and other uh, corporate entities uh, throughout the Chicagoland area that can help people move their business forward. Now, marketing is really key. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are a lot of businesses that are probably okay as far as capital is concerned, but that marketing piece, 
you know, it's difficult to nail down. So in your classes or in your, your coaching, how do you approach the marketing idea? What marketing, is there's two parts to okay. marketing. You have marketing research and marketing staff. So what do you want to do in your marketing, just in layman's terms and in very uh, generalities, is to really decide who your target market is. Oh, we need to define what who you mean by that, too. Who your target market is, meaning who is your customer? Okay. Um, where do they live? Uh, how much money do they okay. bring in? What is their educational background? What do they like to do? Because sometimes you might be marketing to someone mm -hmm. who may not have any interest in your product, so therefore you're wasting your time that's in marketing right. to that person. That's right. So you want to know everything that's going on with um, your potential customers. Okay. Uh, you want to know what's going on in the geographic surroundings. What's going on in the city of Chicago? Um, are we growing here in the city? Are people moving in? Are there new business starts? Are there new families coming in? So what is actually going on in your chosen community? There are a number of resources to help uh, business owners uh, decide uh, and help you with the marketing mm -hmm. research. I always steer people toward the Harold Washington Library. Okay. They have a wonderful business section yes, on the fourth floor and people can go in and get as much demographic information as they possibly need on any type of product and or service that they want to start. So I would say use those resources. And then uh, another part of marketing is the sale. How are you going to sell? What is your marketing plan? And then you get into social media as well. How do you use the website? Yeah. And that's extremely important. Uh, and are you using Facebook? Are you using Twitter? Are you texting? What are you doing to get the message out to your particular client? We've got a caller on the line. Good evening. Um, I want to ask you guys, uh, thank you so much for saying that your center does to men as well. Yes, it does. Uh, that answers the first question. Uh, but my next question is, uh, I'm in, I am an existing business, uh, but I've been operating without a business plan. I want to develop a business plan, but I'm really kind of like, you know, it seems like a very daunting task. That's uh, one of the first things I need. Second thing is, is that one of the markets I'm looking at, uh, I don't do the public market. I do uh, more government contracting market uh, in areas of construction. I was wondering, can you guys, uh, one, help me, uh, assist me in uh, applying for the 8A certification? And two, can you help me getting on the various government schedules so that I could be one of their uh, vendors? Okay, that's, those are very good points. Mm -hmm. I would say you've been operating for a number of years, um, starting your business, and a lot of business owners do that. I would say it's important to write a business plan because you want to know who your market is, you want to know how you're selling to them, you want to know how you're pricing, and then you also want to figure out your financing. Are you breaking even? Uh, what are your uh, chosen revenue assumptions? So I say it's important for you to write the business plan. So come into the office and we can help uh, the caller uh, do that. Secondly, it's about the 8A certification. We are also a procurement and technical assistance center, which means we help you through that maze of figuring oh, wow. out what the contracts okay. are. And then we match you with those government agencies who are looking to buy your product and or service. Um, come into our office and we can help you with that maze. I would also say there's a big uh, procurement opportunity fair this Thursday at the Museum of Science and Industry. It's put on by um, the City of Chicago. There will be a lot of booths there, a lot of uh, corporate, I mean government agencies who are looking to do business. So you might be able to get uh, on the bidders list for a contract. It depends on what trade you're doing though. There's a lot of resources available to that caller. So please call our office and certainly we can help you with that. Now, let's see. What are the questions for us? Do you need an idea in order to, to acquire assistance? But you just, I mean a business, but you just need an idea. You don't, you do, you will help businesses no matter the stage. Right. You need an idea. I okay. mean, you have to meet us halfway. So we right. You need an idea at <laughs> least. You need an idea at least, or you need some sort of um, plan. If, if you started your business already, then we can help you kind of focus yourselves. Okay. Oftentimes we get people coming in and they have three and four and five 
different I business ideas that they want to do all at the same time. Our goal is to help you focus in on that one idea that will help you grow your business. And again, it's going back to wealth creation and creating a job for not only you, but for people in your community. So I say it's more of a holistic approach mm -hmm. that we take because we want you to be successful, the entrepreneurs, because that's what our country is founded on, mm -hmm. is entrepreneurs. And the entrepreneurs, the small business owners, are the people that are keeping this country moving forward. Now, financing. How do you help a business get financing? That's a good question. Uh, we work with over 40 banks in the Chicagoland area, and we also work with community lenders as well. So again, it's going back to the business plan and figuring out how much money do you need. You need to come with, to us with knowing how okay. much money you need, and then we help you figure out if that's the correct amount of money to ask the bank for. Okay. There are several different things that we do, and, and let me go back and say we have two excellent uh, finance counselors there at the center, Teresa Prim and Erica King, who can help those mm. business owners really take a hard look and go to the bank and ask for the right amount of funding. You want to make sure you are fully funded for your project. And you have to also understand that you have to have a, a good credit score. Right now with the economy, with the economy changing, the credit scores and the collateral uh, requirements have gone up substantially. So you want to make sure you have collateral uh, and the capacity to handle debt. Okay. We have another caller. Good evening. I have a question regarding um, trying to put programs together to work with children after school and to help teach them skills so that children will be more involved and not on the street. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you want to create uh, maybe an after-school type of program serving youth. Mm -hmm. um, that is a, an excellent business idea. Sometimes people come to us and they want to do those types of ideas, okay. but it may turn out it might be better to be a nonprofit versus okay. a for-profit, and that's a big difference. Um, if you want to be a for-profit business, uh, then what she needs to do is contact the Department of, uh, of Children and Family Services to get the correct licensing. And then, again, I'm going back to the business plan okay. again and writing the business plan because that will help her um, focus in on the types of children she likes to serve in her after-school program. Okay, thank you. How many uh, people who want to start nonprofits come through your center? Just the rough Yeah, estimate. we get a number of people, um, I'd say over a couple hundred every mm -hmm. year, wanting to start a nonprofit. And again, when, when you're starting a nonprofit, it's still a business. It's just that your taxing requirements are different and your funding requirements are different. But once we help you with the business plan, I also refer people to an organization called the Donors Forum. And that is a good place to start for folks who want to open up nonprofit businesses. We primarily work with for-profit, though. Okay, primarily for-profit. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a reunion of sorts where the people you've helped come back together and give you like a report card, like a dashboard report card? You know, that's a good idea. We should try that. <laughs> um, every month, though, we have what we call um, a wine and cheese. Okay. And so that's an orientation into the uh, center. Our wine and cheese, actually, we have one scheduled for tomorrow evening. And I invite um, the audience to come out to our center at 8 South Michigan. It's uh, at the corner of Michigan and Madison, and the event starts at 530. Um, so I invite all of those people to come out. But every year at our conference, our entrepreneurial women's conference all of our business owners come back share their stories and I, I and I do want to share with you at our, our conference we have an area called corporate connections and that's where we match the business owner with the corporate or government buyer so you are right there in front of the buyer selling your product or service so we do the work for you and put you in front of the buyer but it's up to you Mr. or Miss Entrepreneur <laughs> to sell your product or service. Now, do you help me develop a sales pitch before you put we me do, in front? Actually, All right. We do, actually. We have a series of events leading up to the conference, and we help you develop your 30-second sales pitch because that's all you have is 30 seconds to sell your product or service. These appointments that we have at, um, at our conference 
are about 15 to 20 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And that's a way for you to really get in front of that buyer and sell your, sell your product or service. And they will then decide if they want to buy from you and then move that on to the next level of, of uh, buying. God, is there any other organization that mirrors what you do? This is all wonderful. Well, not as well as we do. Exactly. <laughs> not as well as we do, but there are a number of organizations uh, throughout mm -hmm. uh, the Chicago land and the state of Illinois. They are small business development centers. And if you go out to the websites, you can find one that is closest uh, to your home. There is also small business development centers all over the United States. So people can check into their local community to find one. Okay. Uh, we do uh, offer um, webinars. So we can do a, a oh, okay. better reach for those clients who can't make it into our center. So they can listen to the types of workshops and things like that that we offer other people. Now, uh, do you have online classes or all of them? We haven't gotten uh, to online yet. That is a hope that we hope okay. to have in the next few years. But right now we are offering the webinars. Okay. We're offering in-person classes. And then we also travel throughout um, the suburbs and the Chicagoland area. And we do uh, offer workshops and classes throughout the city. Now, let's say you've gotten me started. You got me off, on my, off my feet now. I've done the jump start and I've got a business plan and you're business coaching and I've made a sale and things seem to be going okay. Uh, what do you offer for businesses like that who want to come in and say get a checkup? Get a business checkup. Get a business checkup. We have various tools. Um, we have what we call a business assessment. Our finance counselors will review all of your financial statements. We help you make that decision. Are you ready to grow or do you need to scale back? We have a fabulous marketing consultant that can help you uh, kind of understand where you are in the marketing phase. So yes, please do come back for a business checkup and, and clients come back to us all the time because they may find that they are ready for certification. And so when they are ready for certification, that's you know the next step up. So that means you are ready to grow your business and you're ready to sell your product and service to a wider audience. And so yes, you need to come to us so we can help <laughs> you um, get ready to meet those buyers. Okay. We have another caller on the line. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you? I was wondering. Um, uh, you were you were mentioning the uh, museum of science industry. When what is the time for that? I believe that event starts at um, 8 a.m. on October the 8th, and it is at the Museum of Science and, and Industry. So you may want to just check the website because there, that is a good opportunity for people who are looking to um, get into government contracting. And when, when is it over? Eight to? Uh, it's over at about three o'clock. Now you were saying there's something on Eighth in Michigan. Our center, the Women's Business Development Center, is located at Eighth South Michigan. That's at the corner of Michigan and Madison. So if you need some help, come on down. Eighth South Michigan at the corner of Michigan and Madison. What, what time is that? Our hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. M and you can oh. call our office as well at 312-853-3477, or feel free to visit the website. And our website is www.wbdc.org. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Now, what could uh, a company expect, say, on Thursday at the procurement fair? Well, there are a lot of exhibitors, uh, and there are a lot of exhibitors, so they need to be prepared with their business cards, okay. with their 30-second elevator pitch, and be prepared to sell. Um, the government is buying. They're about the only people buying <laughs> these days. So it's good to, if you can, get a government uh, contract. At our office, as I mentioned before, we do have the Procurement and Technical mm -hmm. Assistance Center, so that person can help you, you know, decide which contract or which bid opportunity might be good for you. But you have to be certified. So you have to go back and make sure that you are certified as a women business enterprise or a minority business enterprise. And so, or an 8A business enterprise. So there are a lot of organizations that can help you through the certification process uh, if you fall into any of those categories. Okay, now, we've got our certifications, got a business, we have business cards, we have an elevator and we show up Thursday and what happens 
Well, you just got to go from booth to booth. There okay. are there are um, some breakout sessions. Okay. Oh, okay. So I would say, you know, go to some of the breakout sessions, learn, learn, and then network from other business owners. It's important to do networking as well because when we offer uh, networking opportunities, oftentimes two entrepreneurs will come together and they'll say, well, we can't, we're not big enough to bid on this one contract by ourselves. So why don't we come together and form an alliance and go after this, an, mm -hmm. a, the bigger contract. So it's important to develop relationships not only with the corporate community or with the government community, it's important to network with other entrepreneurs because there is power in numbers. Okay, what about another success story? I am just having fun with the pretzel lady in her yeah, the pretzel lady kitchen she, with a $15 million right. company. We actually have a woman business owner who is literally around the corner from the studio. Her name is Priscilla Taylor. She owns a juice company called Maui Wowie. Priscilla came to us about three or four years ago, had been downsizing right size, and wanted to buy a franchise. So we helped her with the business concept. We helped her develop her business plan. And now she has a beautiful uh, place where you can go and enjoy Hawaiian coffee and smoothies. So she's right there on Jackson. So I would urge the whole community to go out and, and see Priscilla. We have another business. Oh, and uh, ask her. How she enjoyed? How she enjoyed the help that with she got. WBDC, absolutely. Right. Um, we also have another business owner who started um, back in January. The name of her company is Sugar Bliss. It's a cupcake. Okay. And you, you actually worked with these people. We actually worked with these people. And they helped them develop their ideas into a plan. Absolutely. They came to us with just an idea. Just an idea. They went through our classes, developed their business plan. We reviewed their financial. Uh, statements and in some cases we help them get the business loan that they needed to get started so there are a lot of um, success stories out of the business women's business development center and again guys can come too if you want to realize your dream of entrepreneurship please give us a call and they're non uh, they're non profit, non -profit. Yeah. that makes it even better yeah absolutely absolutely all of our services are free we do charge a nominal charge for our classes and that's primarily to pay for the materials. Okay. Um, but for the most part, our services are free. We are here really to help the community. We are here to help women entrepreneurs grow their businesses, employ other people within the community. That is our goal and that is the mission of the, of the center. We have a caller on the line. Uh, hi, how you doing? We're wonderful. That great. I am a massage therapist, uh, so and I wanted to start a business doing that. But I don't provide service like you know other people have. They like they wanted to do purses and things of that nature. I'm more of a physical type business. Or, or want to start one? What could you guys do to help me out? Massage therapist, right? Yes. Well, actually, we get a lot of massage therapists in acupuncturists, people in all kind of healthcare trades. I would say the first thing you need to do, again, is going back to the business plan, figuring out how much equipment do you need, especially if you're traveling. So if you need, if you need a new car to get around to your clients, if you um, want to get your tables and towels and other oils and things like that, you should um, figure out what your startup cost would be. And then how much are you going to charge for your service? Are you competitive with the other um, masseuses in the area or with some of the schools? And then go out and do your marketing plan. That's important. The best form of marketing is word of mouth. But again, the so you cannot underestimate social media as well. So we can help you develop your business plan, going back to your financials, understanding your revenue assumptions, how many uh, people do you need to see per day okay. um, in order to meet your uh, goal uh, your, of your stated income. So we can help you do that. And if you need uh, a loan for uh, any type of equipment, we can help you get that loan as well. Excellent, excellent. That well, is thank fantastic. Thank you very much. I really enjoy your show. Thank you very much. Uh, who started this concept, the concept of helping you start business so that you can employ people in your community. I think that is cool. We have actually two excellent visionaries who okay. started the company uh, well over 20 years ago. 
um, that's Hetty Ratner and Carol Dougal. So they have the vision of empower, empowering women entrepreneurs. Uh, women weren't getting access to capital. Um, they weren't getting in front of the appropriate buyers or corporations, um, especially if you are in the trades, if you're in construction mm -hmm. or plumbing or heating. It's, you know, it's a, a guy's world. And they also advocated on behalf of getting women into those trades. So it is their vision uh, on how the center got started. But again, fast forward 20 years mm -hmm. later, and it is one of the oldest and largest and most successful women organizations in the United States. Gosh, I know I was uh, talking to someone, uh, I think, with the state, and they were talking about certifications and how they honored your certifications and mm -hmm. how wonderful your programs were, mm -hmm. and that the vendors who actually come to them to work for them are actually some of the better vendors because you take the time to help them with the business plans, to help them figure out how to market, who they should market to, and to help them figure out that finance piece. Exactly. And we don't want to send you to a buyer who is not uh, wanting to buy your product or service. Okay. Oftentimes they may have enough vendors in their database, so they might be looking for professional services, or they might be looking for um, somebody to buy widgets or something from. So we don't want you to waste your time and the buyer's time trying to sell something that they don't need. That's important as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Find out what your clients need, find out what potential customers need, and we can help you do that um, at the center. We will not match you with an organization or a company that's not looking to buy your particular product or service. Okay. Now, social media is just taking off. Yeah, it's hot. It is. It is hot, hot, hot. So how do you work that into a business plan? Well, that would be part of your marketing plan. Okay. And, and the good news about social media, it's very low cost. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to get your word out into cyberspace. Um, what you need to do is, and, and I do want to say we've got a number of uh, entrepreneurs who want to share their services with other entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and they are social media specialists. They can help entrepreneurs develop a social media plan. Oh. And, you, and it's a lot of work to make sure that all of your tweets are up to date. <laughs> Uh, to make sure your Facebook page is up to date, to make sure the LinkedIn is up to date. And you need to realize that not all of those um, uh, services are good for your business. What would make sense for your business? Um, because it takes a lot of work to keep those business, yes, those um, tools up to, up to date. So, you know, decide what's best for you. Again, the best form of marketing is word of mouth. But again, you're new and you're just getting started. So get uh, a good website, uh, get a good um, marketing plan, and get the word out there. We've got another caller on the line. Good evening. Hi. Uh, I heard you guys talking about um, you help with certifications and things of that nature. Do you guys also help people acquire insurance if they need it for the business? The bonding? The bonding or... Um, Some companies may need like general liability insurance. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, general liability insurance. Yeah. Yeah, we don't offer those services at the center, but we can refer you to uh, insurance agents, insurance brokers, okay. who could help you because oftentimes people just don't know where to go. Okay. So we have a database of insurance providers, of attorneys, of accountants. You name it, and we've got okay. a database of it. So if you want some assistance, please feel free to call our office, and we can make the proper referrals to you, for you. About how big is your staff? We have a staff of about 25. Um, so we, with a small staff, we're doing big work. That's right. So uh, uh, people should just come on down and see our center, uh, learn more about us at our events. Again, our, our orientation wine and cheese event is tomorrow evening, beginning at 530 at the center so I would urge everyone who wants to know a little bit more about our center and how we can help them grow their business to come on down tomorrow evening. Now the, uh, your employees or your consultants are they actively in business themselves or involved in the business arena themselves? That's a good point and, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Mostly all of our business coaches or all of the business coaches are currently in business themselves or former entrepreneurs. So we feel your pain. We know what it means to try to get a business plan done. 
We know what it means not to get paid in 60 or 90 days. We know what it means to go okay. after collections. And we know what it means to be successful. So you're getting a, a, a well-rounded group of people who can help you grow your business, start your business, and move that business forward. How do you help people decide how much staff is the right staff? Because I find that companies are either understaffed or they have too, ma too much staff. And even in my case, not enough staff, but maybe you think you can't really bring anybody else on. Th that's an important point um, because, as you know, in most of your finance projections, labor is, is your, it's your, largest cost, is yeah. your largest cost. And, and that's, uh, it, it's kind of hard to decide, but it depends on, you know, what your revenues are. Uh, what your vision is for your business in the next two to five years and just really figuring out you know how much staff do I need for what we're turning out you don't want to have too much staff and you don't have the have enough work for them to do so I, I mean I, I, I think that's something that you really have to think through carefully it's, it's a tough it's a tough decision it is a tough decision now let's say that for some some reason the business decides it want it wants to close do you help it ramp down also we do unfortunately in this um, environment we've had a number of business owners uh, and it was a prudent uh, business decision uh, and actually I call it a successful business decision as well because there's no sense in putting more money into something that is not going to work we do help you in making that decision we do have people who volunteer their time and they want to work. They're called turnaround specialists, and they can okay. help you ramp down your business if that is something that should happen. Um, and I'd say it's not the end of the world. Um, just, you know, start over. And, and <laughs> get and another get a, idea. And, and get another idea. You know, not everything happened overnight. Uh, we learn from our failures, and you, and, uh, and you gain from your failures. Now, what are some of the indicators, though, for a business to know that they need to get help now so that they don't have to have the, the um, conversation about actually phasing out? You want to think through it, and, and really it's all about the numbers and the marketing plan. Are you, are you hitting your projected numbers? Okay. Are you selling um, that number of units that you want to sell? What is your profit margins? Are you continuously having to mark down? So that's something that we really uh, need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation okay. with the entrepreneur about. And it's important for us to really get a feel for where you are uh, financially. Now, if I come to you and pour my heart out and all of this. We've got Kleenex. Okay. You got, you got <laughs> Kleenex. And I don't have to worry about hearing anywhere else what we oh, talk no, about no, no. as a confidentiality. We, it is, it's very confidential. Okay. Uh, we sign a statement, uh, a confidentiality statement. So your new idea is safe with us. Um, anything that happens within your business is, is safe. So feel free to come in because we can't help you if we don't know. So That's you true. need to come in and, and tell us your story so we can provide the appropriate resources for you. Okay. Now, You've been in this kind of business for how long? A long time. Long time a sounds. long time. And I've been around uh, long enough to know, um, particularly in retail, what makes a good retail store, um, what makes a good entrepreneur. And oftentimes, entrepreneurs have to have the wherewithal. They have to be very creative. It's hard work. It's not a nine to five. People think I want to be an entrepreneur because I want to close my doors at five o'clock and I want to be on the beach uh, with my laptop. Oh, good. And it's a lot more than that. So yes, we help you decide like, yeah, right. uh, who is the best entrepreneur. Who works nine to five anymore? <laughs> Nobody works That's nine to right. five anymore. Exactly. So it, it's important to understand what your capacity is, and we can help you decide that at the center. Now, what other characteristics do you? know that entrepreneurs need really it goes back to passion okay and passion. drive it's really passion and drive and then I have to throw in too uh, do you have the financial resources because you do have to have money to start your business there are always people that come to us and say I have a business idea I want to start my business but I don't have any money 
Understand it does take money to start a business. It may be a little bit of money, but money nonetheless. Um, so if you are looking for traditional financing, mm -hmm. as an example, be prepared to provide 20 to 30 percent of your overall project cost to get that business up and going. Okay. Okay. What business, oh, I need to hold that question for a second. I was going to ask you what businesses should you avoid going into, but we've got a caller on the line. Good evening. I, I am really enjoying this topic that you ladies are, are, are doing tonight. Uh, I, I want a quick question. Do you have any go-bys on your website that I can use, like writing my business plan or a proposal, things of that nature? We do have templates on the business plan. We do have business plan outlines, and we do have oh, wow. financial statements that you can download. So our website address is www.wbdc.org, and all of that information is on there. There's also an interesting uh, download on there. It's called uh, Can I Get a Loan? So it takes you through the loan document checklist, and if you're not quite ready, that document will help you decide okay. if you're ready to get financing and where to go when you are ready to get those additional dollars. So take the template from the website and at least get an idea as to how to formulate the business plan. Well, the first thing is come into our office That's right. and help you and let us help you uh, focus your business idea. And if you already have a business idea or if you're already making sales, then let us under help you understand what your financial uh, okay. statements look like. So there is, a, as I said before, a plethora of services that we can offer entrepreneurs. We are a one-stop shop. We are here to help uh, everybody, people like you, um, retailers, contractors, masseuses, <laughs> everybody that needs to get their business up and going. We are here to help. Now, what business ideas should you avoid implementing? Oh, I am not is. going to say. Okay. So, you know, there are some businesses that um, just are not doing well right now. Okay. Um, I would say the housing, as, as you know. Um, people who want to okay. go into real estate, um, people who are so-called house flippers. Um, I wouldn't say that that's an industry to go in right now, but particularly if you're doing it on a shoestring. Okay. Um, that is something that you might want to uh, avoid simply because of the, the market, the way the market is right now and, and the way the trends are going. But again, nothing is impossible. Uh, just because the uh, economic indicators are saying one thing, your business could be telling us another. So I say follow your passion, um, find the right market, find the right customers who are willing to pay for your product and or service, and get out there and start making some money. <laughs> and employing people in the community. And employing people within the community, absolutely right. Okay, are there any words of wisdom that you could share with us budding entrepreneurs who work too many hours already, Absolutely. who are afraid to hire people, <laughs> and intimidated by business plans. I say um, be prepared, uh, be persistent, don't take a no for an answer, understand money, uh, understand the financing of it, understand networking, uh, don't underestimate networking, that's extremely important, and make sure you have a solid marketing plan and make sure you understand how much you need to sell each month in order to meet your chosen revenue projection. So I say get that passion and get going so you can create jobs for yourself and for the people in your community. Oh, we have a caller on the line. Good evening. Hi, how you doing? Good. Uh, two, two I have two questions. The first one, the first one, do you guys, um, do your organization Could you speak a little louder? We're having agencies? difficulty hearing you. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? A little better. Okay, I was asking if That's they, wonderful. Uh, actually, uh, do things like an employment agency, we refer other people to, like, help my business out, like, if I'm, uh, I need help or something like that. Could you repeat your question, please, sir? Do you guys act also as a employment agency. I say you have people that are trying to start a business and I need some people to help me with my business. Do you guys have uh, that type of service? We actually don't have that type of service, but there are organizations that we can refer you to that if you are looking for 
someone who was skilled in, mm -hmm. with a certain skill set, there are a number of organizations uh, that can help you find the right employee. And in fact, um, you can find employees at low or no cost. There are several services uh, in and around the city of Chicago, as an example, that hire seniors. You can hire a senior as an intern. And remember now, 60 is the new 40. So you can hire a senior. This agency will pay their salary for up to a year and the entrepreneur can get that help that they need um, to get their business moving forward at no cost. And therefore, you're creating a job and you're hiring somebody from your community. So there are a number of resources um, available. Mm. But we don't offer that at our center, but we can refer you out to those organizations that do that. Great, this great. Well, no, you just answered my question. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Ah, that's great. That is fantastic. There are a lot of opportunities um, available for entrepreneurs. Uh, the city wants to help. We want to put people back to work, mm -hmm. and we want to make it as easy as, an, as possible for an entrepreneur to create their business or grow their business. So ag again, take advantage of all of the resources. There are a lot of free resources around this city, and I'd say all you have to do is just ask, and it shall be given to you. That's right. We have another caller on the line. You all have been great tonight. Hello? Hi, how are you? Great, great. You all have been great tonight. This has been quite helpful. I have a question. I would like to know if there are any books that you would recommend one should read prior to coming to you all or just to help them on their way? Well, there are no specific titles that I'd like to refer you to. There are a number of uh, how to start a business uh, plan books out there and people can read and read and read but you know what you got to do so I would suggest you come on in start writing that business plan and get your idea on paper because a lot of people go to a number of classes and yes. they'll do all of the research over and over and over again and then they just never start their okay. businesses so come on in our event is tomorrow evening beginning at 530 and we can start you on your way to getting your business up and going and your event is located 8 South Michigan, at the corner of Michigan and Madison. That's at our center, and that's the Women's Business Development Center. All right. Thank you very much. So uh, Liz Gardner will see you there tomorrow. Be sure you ask for her. <laughs> I sure will. And Thank tell you. her you heard it on this show. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are so right, because execution is key. Execution Execution is key. Is key. You can have the best laid plans, but if you don't actually start doing it, you'll never know if it works. And people are afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of failure. Just get out there, do it. If you make a mistake, learn from your mistake and keep going. Okay. We have another caller on the line. Good evening. Hi, my name is Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi. Okay, I know everybody knows about the violence and economic issues that's going on right now with the South Side, with the teens and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically I am experiencing those things, but I'm trying to better myself through it all. And basically I just started this, I was just got hired for this job for office manager, and I have to take a business management class. And basically my question and comment in one is, I need help paying for my books and supplies, and I'm looking to see if anybody can help me with that. She has to take a business management class, and she needs help with her uh, books and supplies. Well, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations, Amber, on moving Thank forward uh, in getting your education. Uh, the community colleges are a good source. And I would say if you can go into one of the city colleges, uh, they could probably help you and point you to some resources. Yes, that I know that, but this is not through a college. This is actually through the job that I got hired, so I don't have an option of financial aid. You know, actually, you should talk to your employer. I'd start there first because they have uh, the resources to help you with some of that. So that's where I would start first. He can't help me with that. Uh, and the next thing I would do is you would be surprised that, uh, as Liz stated, there, there is help a number of places. Uh, so you should start looking in the library and actually researching 
where the help is available because there are lots of associations and organizations that can help you. We just don't have the list of those with us tonight. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a blessed night. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, it's about time to start to wrap up this wonderful show. So I want to encourage everyone listening to make an appointment uh, either through calling you mm -hmm. or going out to the website, which is www.wbdc.org. Right. Mm -hmm. WBDC.org, which stands for the Women's Business Development Center. Uh, what's your phone number again? 312. 853-3477, extension 0. So please give us a call. And the hours are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. And the only thing that you need is your idea. Liz will actually help you with the rest. Uh, on the screen now, we've just shown some information about how to get in touch with them. And they will be absolutely thrilled to help get you going in your business absolutely. so that you can create a job for yourself as well as creating employment opportunities for the community. I want to thank you, Liz, for joining me tonight. Now, leave, leave us with three very important things that we should do or know when it comes to starting a business. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be passionate. Be passionate. I love that. And be persistent. And be persistent. That's right. So be prepared, be passionate, and be persistent. And as you've heard tonight, as an entrepreneur, you should be prepared <laughs> for just about everything because you won't be able to anticipate all of it. However, if you're persistent in pursuing your dreams, you too will have the ability to live the dreams and the life that you've imagined. Liz wants you to come see her with a plan. I want you to dream big and then go see Liz and task her to help you with that plan. My name is Stephanie Wilson Coleman. This is a sip of inspiration. It's been my pleasure. You guys go out and make it a great week. A bird sang this song to me. There was a message in his melody. Sweetest lyrics that I ever heard. There's a message in this song's arrest. Tomorrow is another day. Living is the only way. Tomorrow's gonna ever come. Listen to the words of the song. sang this song to me he said the birds sang it to the breeze just in case i was feeling down and didn't really want to be around the breeze sometimes come with rain nothing in life stays the same tomorrow's gonna bring a change the message remains the same everything's gonna be a